This morning, I heard a very difficult case. The numbers show that more than half of couples move in together after only 60 days. The couple in the case today moved in together after only three days and caused a lot of issues that they brought to me. Divorce court is now in session. I have here today Michelle Connery and Alan Burgess. The two of you have been living together for a year. The first thing I want to know is, how is it that you two started living together after only knowing each other for three days? Um, when we met, we, we met because he told me the corniest joke ever, mm -hmm. the knock knock, who's there, boo, boo hoo, it's just me, you don't have to cry. And I, could, I, I just could not stop laughing. Mm -hmm. And I was new to Florida, so I decided, well, take a chance. Never done it before. Let's meet. I made it very clear to him, don't, try to, don't come at me with the sex thing. It's not happening. Let's, you know, just hang out. So we met, and we've never left each other since. So, Mr. Burgess, is that pretty much how it went? Well, like, I said, like she said, the first day we met, I, I met up with her, and we spoke for three, four hours, just sat there laughing and joking and playing around, joking, joking, joking. Um, I fell for a hook, line, and sinker, mm -hmm. basically. And I didn't want her to leave. I didn't want her to leave me, didn't want her to move, didn't want her to go back to New York or go somewhere else, come out to California or do anything else. I wanted her to be with me. Because it was, if, if I left her or if she left me, I knew I would regret it my entire life. Mm -hmm. So wow. that's why I was like, well, it's not a very copacetic place, a thing for you to be in here moving to my house. Uh -huh. It'd be a lot easier. Well, you're not concerned at all that, you know, you know, John Wayne Gacy was a clown. You know what I mean? But he turned it out to be, you know, had a lot of dead bodies under his house. So didn't it worry you at all? I mean, with a knock-knock joke, and you move in with the guy, you really don't know who he is? And Judge Lynn, I felt an intimate connection with him. Uh -huh. And that's hard for me to say because I'm... I'm not an easy person to get along with. Uh -huh. It takes a lot to get close to me. And when I met him, it was like a movie. You know, he just walked into my heart. I believe for the past couple of years, everything was leading up to him entering my life. He saved me. I don't have a pretty past, and I'm not the best of people. But everything that he did to try to help me, I appreciate. I don't have family. I don't have friends. The life I left has caused me to lose a lot. And Alan never judged me. He never held it over my head. And he never questioned who I was trying to become. He stood by my side when I needed him. Just in three days, for the first time in my life, somebody stood up for me. And it was him. Yeah, so far, he's sounding like Superman over here. That's My right. question is, why are you here now, 12 months later, uh, talking to me about a man who just rescued you out of the depths of deprivation? Why is, it, why is it over now? It's been two and a half years. Two and a half years. And in the beginning, everything was, it was great until we took a trip to New York. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from New York City, South Bronx, born in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I had some business to take care of. It would have took one day. Alan wanted to go. My obligation to him, being for what he did for me, I felt, you know what, okay, let's go. Rented a car, hotel room, drove out to New York City. It was supposed to be a one day trip. It ended up being almost two weeks. He lost his job. I ended up getting pregnant. And when we got back to Florida, he was a jerk to me. He was told that he was unable to have children. So when I got pregnant, he just freaked out. It, it hit me, it, it really hit me over the head really hard. Um, when she told me that, I, I was flabbergasted beyond belief. So you got some mad, bad medical information. Well, no, I, I, no, actually it was spot on. It's just that it was certain circumstances happened and it, she got pregnant, but she also had a miscarriage after that. Uh -huh. And I... I also lost my job at the same time. So why did you lose your job? Because you were out of town yeah, for so long. Yeah, it was a it was a mi mistake for my boss. Also, he didn't tell his bosses that I went out. So they uh -huh. thought I just left the job. Uh -huh. So they started hiring somebody else. Um, 
I, I was just in my own mind trying to figure out what I can do. Now I get, I, I get hit over the head with, oh, now I'm pregnant, so now mm -hmm. I really have to do. Right. And, and did you take it out on her? Did, did it come out as anger as opposed to uh, you know, distress generally, but did it come out as anger? Not anger, more, about, more or less um, being a jerk to her. Uh, just what, what even... kind of jerkified things did you do? Oh, I don't listen to her. I just didn't do nothing for her. I, I was, um, there's a part where we had some money saved away so we could move, uh, move out to our own place. And I took some money. I was going to put it back, but she yelled at me first. She was like, why are you doing that for her? And I didn't have time to put it back and, and all this other stuff. But I was being a jerk to her just because she was there. Right. And I was the only person I could be a jerk to. And I didn't know how to verbally talk to her. So mm -hmm. I just took it out on her. Okay. How long did that last? Two or months. You still, are you, huh? Two months. Two months. Just I two found, weeks? I, no, two months. I found, two I months. found a, jump, a, a job after about a month and a half, and I started working again. I have, and I even left that job and went to another job. Um, I'm now a full-time So once he got a job, was he, he less of a jerk? No, he wasn't. Yes, I was. I was not. I was hang on, really... let Ms. Connery tell me, what were you feeling from him? What were you getting from him? He hid things from me, the money situation. Um, like, for instance, I have a bank card. My bank card stayed in his wallet. I never left the house, okay? When we first got together, I never went anywhere. I took care of three dogs and a family member. He left me in the house days on end with no food in the house at all. And I wasn't working, so I had to figure out a way to put food in the refrigerator for everybody. I had to pick up the dog crap. I had to do the laundry. I kept the house immaculate. Then he comes to me and tells me, oh, well, I used to pay my ex-girlfriend to do that. It took him two and a half years to buy me a $3 bill. It took him another two and a half years to buy me a purse. And I don't ask for anything. I do my own hair. I do my own nails. I do his hair, his nails. I do it all. He doesn't want for anything. OK. I got you. I've done a lot of dumb things in my life. But I don't want one of those dumb things to be you. Every day is a fight for me. And fighting to love you and lift you up is getting very, very hard. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. After all she just told me, I took a look at your papers and reread them. You think he's lazy. Yes. Why don't you explain that to me? Um, Alan has been working as an electrician for almost 15 years mm -hmm. on the same job under the same master electrician. Four years is requirement for, to take your license for journeyman. He's mm -hmm. been on the job for almost 15 years. He doesn't, he refuses to take it. More money, more opportunity, brand yourself, build yourself bigger. You've been doing this for your uncle for how long? Take the test. They treat him like, they treat him like, they call him dumb. They call him stupid. And he just laughs it off. He's a brilliant young man. He's good at what he does. He's a very good electrician, but he has no faith in himself. He'd rather sit and play on a video game or just sleep. Yeah. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. M Mr. Burgess, your response to that is what? <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you take the test? I mean, more money is always a good thing. Yeah, it is. It, it, it is. But, um... With being a little bit, there's a lot of codes that you have to learn. I don't know all the codes, you know. Um, I also, After 15 years? Well, uh, well they change every four years. Uh -huh. And so if I, don't, if I don't keep up with the book, and that's also a money situation, I'm real bad with my money. I'm real bad. That's why it's just, if I get money, it's just it's here and then it's gone. I, I pay my bills, but I also any extra stuff just goes away. Um, for, Hang on, Mr. Burgess. Ms. Conrad, I want you to tell me who you are okay. as, a, a, as a woman. I mean, you tell me and him who you are. I'm Michelle. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an American woman. I'm a mother. I'm a friend. I'm a sister. I'm compassionate, and I have goals. I've done a lot of dumb things in my life, but I don't want one of those dumb things to be you. I have picked myself up from the gutter, and I don't mean literally. Okay, I've been homeless, I've been hungry, 
but never once have I stopped striving to get better and be better. Every day is a fight for me. Every day is a fight for me. And fighting to love you and lift you up is getting very, very hard. I go to school, I work a crappy job, but I take care of you. I have faith in you. I love you. But you don't have any of that for yourself. And what bothers me the most is that I may have to leave you because I cannot go back to that place again. We don't even have a bed. And that hasn't motivated you to do more than what you do. If a bill comes in the house, yes, you pay your bills now. But before, who was paying them? I have no support from you. The Speaking of no support, I want to ask you something. You did something that became very famous. And you say that he wasn't supportive of you during the difficult responses you got from what you did. So why don't you tell me what you did? I did a video about Mike Brown. Uh-huh. I was bothered by the fact that American people was saying that Mike Brown was like Emmett Till. Mike Brown and Emmett Till, two different people. Emmett Till was killed because he was black. No other reason other than he was black. Mike Brown was killed because he and his actions led to his death. Mike Brown started the path that led him to his demise, not being black. When you lump those three things, when you lump those two things together, it shows disrespect for our history. It shows disrespect for our people. It shows disrespect for the children today because you're teaching them wrong. So I spoke out against it. Mike Brown was no hero. Mike Brown was no Emmett Till. Mike Brown does not stand for me, and I will not stand for Mike Brown. You spoke your mind and you spoke your opinion. You also got a lot of negative feedback because of that. Why don't you tell me the nature of the responses you got and what he did uh, in response to the responses? I got called the Uncle Tom. I got called the white man's bed wench. I got called a traitor to my race. I've been told, I hope you get killed in the street. I hope your children die the way Mike Brown died. And his response was, if it get too hectic, I'll be at the office. No. You no. did not say that? No, Mr. Burgess, no, what was no. your response? It wasn't. First off, that video came out when she did that video. I didn't know about that video for three days. She never told me about that. Half the stuff that, half the stuff that she's been, that people have been saying to her, she doesn't tell me. She doesn't mm -hmm. want to tell me. Mm -hmm. She sits there and she doesn't want to tell me that because she doesn't want me to be all, she doesn't want me to be overprotective. Mm -hmm. She thinks if I did that, I would tell her to take it down. Mm -hmm. I support her in everything she does. She has a bunch of videos on there. On, the, on social media, and I, I 99% of them, it's her delivery that could use a little work, but I agree with her, and I do support her, I do want it, but I told, I, as a joke, I said, you know, she, she tells me, you know, some of these guys are saying they want to look for me and find me. I was joking around, I was like, well, I got an office I can go sleep at for a couple of days if anything gets too hectic. You know what I mean? As a joke. Yeah, but ba honestly, bad timing. Yes, it Some was. Some stuff isn't funny. You but, know what I mean? At the wrong time. But seriously, I would kill and defend anybody that tried to harm her. Okay. I got it. I got it. I've had it for 30 years. Of You can't do this. You can't do this. It takes me a little bit more time. Um, I told you I got your back. Do you think Michelle and Alan moved in together too fast? Call now to vote. 855-70-DIVORCE. That's 855-70-DIVORCE. You'll receive some exclusive offers. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mr. Burgess, you still love her. Yes, ma'am. And you want to keep her. Yeah. And I don't think she wants to leave. I think she feels that she might have to leave because you're not stepping up and being what she needs. Do you have any inkling what it is you could do to keep a woman that you love? Do, do, do you have any idea? Yeah, I just said, uh, yes, I do, honestly. Yeah, okay, now, and be specific for me. Well, okay. actually, my goal is now she, she's actually gone on, gone on my back, and I'm actually going to go in for my uh, journeyman's electrician's license. Um, I'm okay with that. You're going to go to electric license. That's yeah, good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Um, we're also going to be moving. I want to be moving so we can so she can further her her uh, further her career and everything like that. We want to start fresh, mm -hmm. just totally fresh in a new state. Um, 
and I want to be able to, to do that. The, the, electri the electrical license is a big part mm -hmm. of my laziness, as she says it. Mm -hmm. um, my selfishness is also saying that I can't do it. So saying I limit myself because of what I've been told for 30 years. So it's kind of hard for her to tell me, oh, you can't do this, you can't do this for, with only two and a half years of telling me this when I've had it for 30 years of you can't do this, you can't do this. It takes me a little bit more time than her to be able to say, oh, I can do this. I know I can. But that's why I'm, I told you I got your back. You did one thing right. You said I'm going to go for the license. You did, and, the, and the rest of the time you spent justifying the difficulties you have doing that, those things that make you a man. Now, I'm going to say a few things to both of you about what I think this situation needs and how you can make it happen. But I need you to listen to me in a voice that says, at some point, you have to decide whether or not you're going to be a man. No matter what happened, it, she had a whole lot of stuff that happened in her past that does not determine who she is now or what her tomorrow is going to be. You need to step up on that plane and get there with her. In divorce court, people tell me the most intimate details of their lives. Join the conversation and share your experience on our Twitter page at Divorce Court and on our Facebook page. See how fans deal with their own relationships. The discussion can get heated. Don't miss it. Michelle, I'm not worried about you, Ms. Conway. I think you are a strong, capable individual. I think you know what you want. I think you've been through difficult times. But I think you have to ask yourself this. Are you committed to a guy that has what it takes to be the kind of man that you need to have? That's the question that you have to answer. And, you know, the fact that he rescued you at one point was extraordinary and was wonderful when you needed it. But you can never forget that you are strong and on your own and able. Now, he said he's going to get his license. But right before he said it, he had a modifier. He said, she was on my back, so I'm going to get it. That, to me, is not a statement of a grown man. That's a little boy whose mama's going to spank him if he doesn't do what he's supposed to do. Do you see what I'm saying? So I want you to make sure he's contributing to you the way you need, it, need to be contributed to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. D don't, don't hold yourself back with that. Mr. Burgess, I believe you're a nice person. I believe you're a little boy. I believe you rely on your, little, on your boyish ways to keep from growing up. You can't tell me any more about how privileged your background was. I had a privileged background. I never made a bed until I got married. <laughs> Just didn't do it. Had housekeepers, all this, college, you know, all this. I did. never saw a tuition bill. I never, I never had to work. My first job was at 24. I was a lawyer. Everything was paid for. You know what I mean? My daddy bought me cars, all that kind of stuff. But the minute I hit 24, and Daddy called and said, you ain't getting nothing else. I became a woman. And I never called, and I never made excuses, and I never did anything but come to work on time, work like a dog, do all the things that I had to do to be a woman. Privilege is no excuse for failure to maintain manhood. And you got to remember that. I wish you both all the luck in the world, but make sure you understand you always have a decision. And make sure you always understand that every act of a man is one that has no excuses attached to it. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> Love can make you feel great. It makes you feel wonderful. But it's not enough to establish a relationship. 
you have to decide that you and the person that you're with are on the same plane, that you're both mature enough to handle marriage, because marriage is grown folks' business.